this is Nick from Breaker Press Games, and in this episode of DCC Basics, we're going to talk about other combat rules. Alright, before we get into the weird world of other combat rules, uh, if you find this video interesting, entertaining, or otherwise uh, valuable in your life, uh, please like, subscribe, comment down below. It uh, you know does wonderful things in the algorithms. It is an A-plus thing to do uh, and doesn't cost you anything, so much appreciated. Uh, additionally, if you want to support Breaker Press Games further, you can go to the Breaker Press web store or drive through RPG and pick up stuff like... Uh, Tragedy Wood Witch Rise, which is my brand new adventure release. Uh, this is also, uh, should be available any day now through uh, Goodman Games Web Store as well as Exalted Funeral. Uh, obviously, the uh, the ultimate way that you can support Breaker Press Games is by becoming a member on Patreon. Uh, a lot of your cha uh, favorite channels have uh, uh, Patreon pages. Uh, this month's reward is the K9 2.0. You can get a breakdown as to what is different about the K9 2.0 versus the version that was in Rabid Dogs or was otherwise available. You can check that out uh, in the Breaker Bulletin that I just posted earlier today. So, all those things aside, let's let's. Oh, and you can you can pick up a uh, Precipice of Corruption T-shirt through the Breaker Press Web Store. All those things are options that are available to you. Uh, Let's get into talking about other combat rules because I find page 96 of the Dungeon Crawl Classics rulebook absolutely fascinating because there's a lot of really interesting, just little little details in there that you just didn't know. Um, some of them are common things like uh, what we're going to talk about first, which is ability loss. And some of them are really, when we get to the last, the second last one, comment down below if you knew this rule existed because I sure, I sure didn't. And I've read this section of the book multiple times, and for some reason, that particular rule just never connected. So, first and foremost, let's talk about ability loss. Now, this is one that I've gotten wrong in the past. I actually, uh, in the uh, uh, early drafts of Tragedy at Woodwitch Rise, uh, I actually had uh, this rule wrong, and I've definitely run it wrong at the table before. Uh, but Reverend Jack Day... <laughs> Reverend Jack. <laughs> oh, Reverend Jack J. Ultimac. Uh, uh, when was do when he was doing the editing for Tragedy at Woodwitch Rise, was like, hey, uh, you, you're you're doing this wrong, and I was like, that is good to know. So, what is was I doing wrong? Well, first and foremost, ability loss can go all the way down to zero, but when ability score loss goes down to zero, and so you can you can uh, spell burn or you can luck burn all the way down to zero, but bad things happen. Now. Uh, in the case of if you burn your uh, intelligence or personality down to zero, you cannot communicate anymore, nor can you feed yourself. So obviously, that's a problem. Uh, if you burn your strength or agility down to uh, zero, you cannot move. Um, and if you burn your stamina down to zero, you lose consciousness. Uh, and that is something that actually, uh, with the swimming rules in uh, Tragedy at Woodwitch Rise, that is something that uh, could very well happen. Additionally, if you burn luck down to zero, and this is an important one, because uh, I don't think I covered this uh, in any of the luck videos. I'll link luck videos over here. Um, but uh, if you burn your luck down to zero, you are incapable of accomplishing anything due to bizarre mishaps. Uh, so... You know, you have to, as as a judge, you need to adjudicate these things because the PC has basically made themselves useless in some way, shape, or form. Now, it is possible to survive, assuming that, uh, you know, the PC was protected and, uh, you know, brought back to someplace safe um, because ability score loss does heal over time, assuming they uh, survive that long. Uh, but that is a big, big assumption. So that is ability score loss. Let's talk about catching fire. So every uh, player seems obsessed with setting things on fire, whether it is uh, flaming oil on uh, on monsters. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I learned a lot about flaming arrows and uh, and how they work and don't work. 
uh, but that's a discussion for another time. But there are so many ways that uh, that PCs want to set things on fire. But the important thing for you to know uh, as a judge and as a player is that uh, if you set a uh, monster or NPC or whatever on fire, uh, they will take 1d6 damage uh, per round and they may use their action to stop, drop, and roll. And so it takes one round to stop, drop, and roll, and they do a DC 10 ref save, and if they pass the ref save, they put out the flames. Um, otherwise, then it continues on to the next round. So uh, let's talk about the big surprise rule that I, I did not, even though I've read it before, it just never clicked. Um, but do uh, you want to be a berserker? Because now is your chance. There are the charge rules. Um, this one was brand new to me. Um, if you've used this one before, put it down in the comments uh, and shame me because I had no idea this was a thing. But a reckless character can use one action to declare a charge. In order to charge, the PC must move at least half of their speed. A charging PC gains a plus two attack uh, or a plus two bonus to attack rolls, uh, but suffers a minus two AC penalty until their next turn. So yeah, that is something that uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, uh, warrior uh, PCs and just PCs in general would love to take advantage of, uh, but it was something that I didn't know, and I am going to have to make sure to leave a note to myself to remember this in the future so that my uh, players can take advantage of it, because I'm sure that they will. And that will also encourage them to be more bold in their actions and uh, do my favorite thing, which is to live fully and die gloriously. So... Uh, with that out of the way, we're going to cycle back to uh, to flames and things. Uh, there are actually rules in the rulebook for dropping a torch. If you drop a torch, there is a 50% chance of it est uh, becoming extinguished. Uh, so yeah, that is a, uh, a really interesting... Those are four rules that uh, you may not have known, uh, but uh, actually come into play a considerable amount. In the case of charge, I think that is something that... Uh, when presented with that option, players are going to take advantage of it. So, uh, in part two, we are going to cover falling, uh, firing into melee, and grappling. Uh, I think those three should be enough to uh, to do a whole video on because all of those are a little bit more involved. Uh, but hopefully this was useful to you. Uh, as always, thank you for supporting indie games and indie game designers. If you have ideas for other videos, please post them down in the comments. Thank you, and I will talk to you all soon.